1 Samuel chapter 14. And we've seen Saul in battle. And he didn't wait. He intervened into the priest's office where he doesn't belong. He's no longer established to be on the throne. He'll be there, but God's given up on him. David would be the next one. David would be the one that's in the line of Jesus Christ. Now it came to pass upon a day that Jonathan, the son of Saul. Now we're going to pick up Jonathan now. And we're going to read about Jonathan. Jonathan is a wonderful, excellent person in the Bible. He's right with God. And we'll see his failure at the end. Said unto the young man that bear his armor. That's the first time armor shows up. And this man, what he is, he goes with Jonathan wherever Jonathan goes in battle. And you're going to see this armor bearer. He's going to happen. He's going to show up much in the Bible. He carries his weapons, his armor, his arrows, his bows. And these two are found often. Come. And let us go over to Philistine Garrison. Again, that's weaponry uh, where they keep the weapons and supply. But here is where they keep the troops. This is where the troops are staying. That is on the other side. The other side. So Jonathan is going to cross over. He's going to a place where the enemy is with his armor bearer. But he told not his father. I don't know why. Maybe opposition, but and Saul tarried in the utter part of Gibna, that's his hometown, under a pomegranate tree, which is in Migron. And tree that produces fruit, shade, the desert climate. It's an area that will can trees will grow. And the people that were with him were about six hundred men. Now when you look at chapter thirteen, verse fifteen. And Samuel rose and got him up from Gilgal unto Giba of Benjamin. And Saul numbered the people that were present with him, about 600 men. Probably the same ones. Or he has a study of 600 men. And Ahiah, this is interesting, the son of Ahitub, that's the first time that name shows up. Every time I think of that name, I think of Ahitub, one of those old-fashioned tubs. Which means good. His name means good. Ichabob's brother. Now, Ichabob, chapter 4, verse 21. Who's Ichabob? And we'll pick up verse 19, 4, 19. The story of Ichabob. Ichabob means the glory is departed. The ark has been taken. It's in the hands of Philistines in 1 Samuel 4. There was another battle with the Pharisees, the Philistines. They won. They took the ark. The news came to Eli. He, he's a worldly kind of priest, high priest. His sons were wicked. He did not discipline his sons. He hears the news. He falls over backwards in his seat and dies. Well, he has a daughter that is pregnant from his son in 419. And his daughter-in-law, Finney has his wife was was with child near to be delivered and when she heard the tidings that the ark of god was taken and that her father-in-law and her husband were dead it was like the story of ruth but this is a bad ruth <laughs> she bowed herself and travailed for her pains came upon her it brought and induced labor such harshness and about the time of her death, the woman that stood by her said unto her, Fear not, for thou hast borne a son. But she answered not, neither did she regard it. And she named the child Ichabod, saying, The glory is departed from Israel, because the ark of God was taken, and because of her father-in-law and her husband. Now notice how she puts her father-in-law before the husband. And she said, The glory is departed from Israel, and that's Ichabod. Now here's Ichabod grown up. And Eli's sons, the prophecy is not completely fulfilled until Samuel removes 
the the priest from the office. But tonight, here he is. Ahai, Ahai, the son of Ahitub, Ichabod's brother. So that woman had more than one son besides Ichabod. The son of Hinnahaz, the son of Eli. So there's at least two sons of Hinnahaz. The son of Eli, that's the priest of Aaron. Eli is the high priest. The Lord's priest in Shiloh. Wearing the ephod. Wearing is the first time that shows up. It has to do with the ephod. So the sons of Eli are still in that office. And Ahiah has taken over for Eli. Wearing the ephod. And the people knew not that Jonathan was gone. So here's Saul around this tree. He's got his, his 600 soldiers and he's got the priests around him. And he's already intervened into the office. And between the passages by which Jonathan sought to go over on the Philistine garrison, there was a sharp rock on the one side and a sharp rock on the other side. You say, well, who cares about these rocks? Well, in the United States, we got Pilgrim Rock. Plymouth Rock, excuse me. We've got a rock that has a bunch of four faces from old men on it. Uh, other kinds of rocks that are interesting in America. And here's a place in Israel, and they're two sharp rocks, and they are a landmark. I didn't think about it. even look at to see if I, if there was a picture. That'd be interesting to see if you can find a picture on the internet. On the other side, and the name of the one was Boses. Boses, not pronouncing it correctly. I apologize. And the name of the other is Shia. Now there's a there later on. There's going to be in the temple sound though, There's going to be a column, a pillar called Boaz. This is Boses. And as any place on a map, they're given names. They're a landmark. The forefront of the one was situate. That's the first time that shows up. Location. This is the place. Northward over against Michmash. And the other is southward over against Gibna. Isn't it interesting? We are not told the details, really, of Jesus, the birth of the Messiah, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. There was no room at the inn for him, and they went to a manger, and they, you know, he slept where the animals ate, and we don't know the date. Well, with Scripture, Scripture, we can probably figure out the date, but we don't really know much. We don't know who was there. We know Mary was there. But the Bible takes the time to explain the, exult, the location of of two rocks that Jonathan and his armor bearer are going to use to go fight the enemy. And there's something to this. And it's probably a reference somehow to the second advent when God, Jesus Christ, will conquer all the enemies of Israel. And Jonathan said to his young man, right, he's young, that bear his armor. Come and let us go over unto the garrison of these uncircumcised. Now, what they're uncircumcised, yes. But you see, to the Jew, that is a taunt. That is a joke. That is insulting. You know, we're circumcised. But them, <laughs> they're not. You know, Gentiles. Just ask Jonah and Peter about those Gentiles. It may be that the Lord will work for us. Now look at the faith he has. Notice that with Jonathan already. He's a soldier. He's a warrior. And he has faith in God. You're going to see this throughout the whole time. And then when we get into David and Jonathan. Wonderful story about. The, I would believe that Jonathan. Is in, in glory. But then again, he makes a maneuver that you got to question. We'll get to that later. So, 
Those uncircumcised, you know, it'd be like David fighting Goliath. That uncircumcised guy, I'm going to, you know, kick your butt with God. Maybe that the Lord will work for us, faith. For there is no restraint, the only time that word shows up in the Bible, to the Lord to save by many or by few. If God's going to get the victory here, whatever his armor bearer's name is, we don't know his name. I'm going to tell you, armor bearer, one thing. Whether it be us two or the 600 men back with my dad, God's going to get the victory. And what Jonathan's saying now is going to be remarkable later on when we read the Bible, Lord willing, when we get to that. And these studies is one little boy, young man, is going to take five stones and he's going to destroy Israel. He's going to destroy Palestine. The Philistines. The entire nation is scared again against this one giant who's got five brothers all together. You say, you know, you say Goliath and the four giants. And there's a relationship between Goliath and his and his brothers. We get to in Chronicles, I believe it is. But one man. David will challenge a giant in an army. And Jonathan here, the faith that he has in God, it's just me and you, armor bearer. And they are the enemy of God, as David said about Goliath. We're going to go over there, and if God willing, as I say, we're going to go kick some butt by God. Even if it's the two of us. If God's with us, that man's got faith. And his armor bearer said unto him, Do all that's in thy heart. See, it's heart. He knows that Jonathan is not just talking, talking. He knows Jonathan is not talking about his heart, his mind. He's speaking from his heart. This faith comes from his heart. Behold, I am with thee according to thy heart. Then said Jonathan, All right, we're going to go? Okay, we're going to go. Behold, we will pass over unto these men, and we will discover ourselves unto them. Now, here's the plan. Here's the military thing. We're going to go up to them, and we're going to say, Hi, we're here. All right, condition number one. If they say thus unto us, Tarry until we come to you, then we will stand still in our place. And we'll not go up to them. All right. Hi, Philistines. We're here. No, no, no. You guys just wait for us to come and get you. Okay. We're not fighting. God said, no, don't go. Condition number two. But if they say thus, come unto us, then we will go up. And the Lord has delivered them into our hands. And this shall be a sign. They're Jews. Jews require a sign. This is a police. Unto us. Okay, so we show. Hi, Philistines. Hey, come here, guys. Come here. Come over here. Oh, God's going to kick their butt. They say, hey, wait. No, stay over there. God's not going to do nothing with us. Come. Come here. Oh, boy, we're going to have some fun. And both of them discovered themselves unto the garrison of Philistines. Hi, guys. And the Philistines said, Behold, the Hebrews come forth out of the holes where they had hid themselves. Chapter 13, verse 6. Chapter 13, verse 6. The Bible says, And the men of Israel saw that they were in a strait, for the people were distressed. Then the people did hid themselves in caves and thickets and the rocks and high places in the pits and some of the Hebrews went over to Jordan in the land of Geth. So the Philistines know Israel's on the run. Those cowards. So when they say, look, here's these Hebrews, here's these cowards. <laughs> we got them now. Notice every time that Saul steps in, he's got a coward nation. But they wanted a man for a king and not God. Come forth out of the holes where they have hid themselves. 
And the men of the garrison answered Jonathan and his armor bearer and said, Come up to us. Oh, uh, there we go. <laughs> you just imagine Jonathan's armor bearer. This is it. <laughs> Give me that sword. Give me that spear. We're going to do it. You imagine that armor bearer. He's got that little smirk on And one of the guys like, What's going on with these two? Because that's God saying, We laid out the sign. We laid out the fleece. God says, Hey, come. We're going to do some business here. Come after me, for the Lord, uh, wait a minute. Come up unto us, and we will sh show thee, yeah, we will show you a, let me try, excuse me. Come to us, and we will show you a thing. Doesn't ever say what that thing is. And Jonathan said to his armor bearer, come up after me, for the Lord has delivered them into the hand of Israel. Look who he gives the credit to, not him. He says, we're going to get victory, and we're doing it for our people and for our nation under our God. That is in our, that is in God we trust for Israel. And Jonathan climbed, that's the first time that shows up, up upon his hands and upon his feet. He is now, and his armor bearer are defenseless right now. If he's climbing up that with his arms and feet, that means he has nothing in his hand. He's using everything that he would for a weapon to get himself up and his armor bearer. So they have no weapons right now, and the Philistines could take advantage of them. And I climbed that we just saw that's the first place. There's only one other place in the Bible it shows up. Let's just take a look there. Luke 19 4. Just take a look there. Only two places in the in the Bible. Sometimes I, I when I make these notes, I just glance over. But Luke nineteen four. It's in the gospel, so we're talking about a man that, that loves the Lord, so let's check it out. In Luke nineteen four. Oh. Zacchaeus. And he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree. Isn't that funny? Because Saul's under a pomegranate tree. And he's waiting to see Jesus. Jonathan's waiting to see the enemy. While his father's back in the, under a tree. And his armor bearer after him. And there fell before Jonathan. And his armor bearer slew after him. So not only is the armor bearer just holding the weaponry of Jonathan, but the armor bearer is also fighting. Jonathan is before him fighting, and the armor bearer is behind him. That pictures Jesus Christ with the church coming back. Jesus Christ with the, with the eyes of flame of fire, just wiping out everybody. And Joel says, here comes the army behind him, not breaking rank. And that first slaughter... And it's kind of interesting because we look back here in oh, where I, I thought I had Mark. In thirteen thirty-three. Now that's at the first slaughter. But that's not the first battle. In thirteen three, look at look at Jonathan here. And Jonathan smoked the garrison of Philistine that was in Gibba. And the Philistines heard of it. And that's what started the ba big battle. <laughs> Jonathan's over there killing the Philistines. And the Philistines are like, we're going against you guys. Here Jonathan's doing it again. This guy doesn't take on one man on one man. He takes on a whole troop. Him and his armor bearer. This is the first slaughter. Which Jonathan and his armor bearer made. So these two together. <laughs> they take on armory. That garrison would be like an armory in the states of, of America where you have the National Guard, where they store their weapons and their equipment and their jeeps and whatever they use. That's what this garrison is. And Jonathan and his armor bearer are walking into this place is destroying. Made was about 20 men. Again, that 20 is an interesting number in the Bible. Within, as it were, an half acre, the first and last time that word shows up, acre, of land. That's a pretty good piece of land. 
which a yoke of oxen might plow. That's an interesting reference because we go back to 1320. But all the Israelites went down the Philistines to sharpen every man his share, and he got a whole bunch of farming equipment mentioned. So where this garrison of the Philistine is, is a land size where, you know, it's a field. You've seen field where, where they plant crops. This is how big this place is. It's a half an acre. And there was trembling in the host. Now this is the Philistines. In the field. Among all the people, the garrison. See, the people, the garrison, the Philistines. And the spoilers, chapter 13, verse 17. 13, 17. And the spoilers came out of the camp of the Philistines in three companies. They're going, they're looting Israel. Well, here they are again, and Jonathan is kicking their butt. They also trembled. And the earth quaked. God sent an earthquake. With Jonathan and his armor bearer fighting the earthquake. And this is not it. So it was very great trembling. Now is that the earth or is that the people? The last reference was the earthquake. So it would be probably the earthquake. The people are trembling and the earth is trembling. Because of Jonathan and his armor bearer. And the watchman, that's the first time that shows up, of Saul and Gibna of Benjamin, looked. You know, he looks out, what's going on? And behold, the multitude melted away. There were a whole bunch of Philistines standing over there. Now they're running away. They are dropping to the ground dead. And they went on beating, that's the first time that word shows up, down one another. What's going on here? A Philistine is killing a Philistine. They are killing them own selves, Judges 7.22. And this is a tactic that God uses, Judges 7.22. You know, they say, and I've heard this from soldiers, that in World War II and Vietnam, if you got wounded in the back or the butt side, you've got some explaining to do. Because first of all, if you are on the lines of fire, somebody on your own side shot you. Now, if the enemy shot you, you're going the wrong way. And Judges 7.22. And the 300 blew trumpets, and the Lord set every man's sword against his fellow throughout all the hosts. Now that's something God's done before, and he's doing it again. And Philistines are killing Philistines. And you can imagine that moment when they get into hell. Man, you put me in here. Would you kill me? We're supposed to go out to the Jews, the Hebrews. So what's going on is a mass confusion. We don't even know who we are. Then says Saul unto the people that were with him, Number now, and see who is gone from us. And when they had numbered, behold, Jonathan and his armor bearer were not there. Now this is going to happen again with Jonathan between his father and him. They keep on casting these lots. Knows the faith, knows the patriotism, and knows the strength that Jonathan has because we'll need this information later. And Saul said to Ahiah, Bring hither the ark of God. For the ark was at that time with the children of Israel. It wasn't in the battle. Huh? We, <coughs> excuse me. We're not going to do that again. We don't want those Philistines to get a hold of that ark again. 
Yeah, after was it Dagon? Or Dagon sitting there, he probably got bandages still on him. Uh -huh. And it came to pass when Saul talked unto the priests that the noise that was in the host of the Philistines went on and increased. They're still key. Hey, bring the ark of the God over here. What is that I hear? They're just screaming and hollering. And I'm a Philistine. <laughs> Dead. I'm one of you. And not one person of Israel except for two men are doing the fighting. Jonathan's armor bearer, that's it. The rest of it, the, they're underneath that tree. And Saul stands up and says, there's something going on there. We need the priest. We need that ark of God. And Saul said to the priest, withdraw thy hand. Now, I don't need that ark. Uh-oh. You know, I want Saul a little getting a little angry here because, you know, let me remember that offering and getting balled out by Samuel. I don't need the I don't need the ark. Whoa. And Saul and all the people that were with him assembled themselves. Well, it's about time. <laughs> and they came to the battle. I wonder how long it's been. And behold, every man's sword was against his. They are watching the Philistines kill the Philistines as it was going on in Judges 7. And you just imagine just sitting there with their hands on their hips like, wow. This is, I think I've heard this in the Bible before. Yeah, Judges 7. Why does Judges keep coming back in the, in the time of Saul? How many times have we gone back to Judges since we've read about Saul? Uh-huh. History repeats itself. Against his fellow, and there was very great dis discomfiture. That's the first and last time that word shows up. They're killing each other, and they're causing each other great pain. I mean, can you imagine when they go back to the, to the hospital, you know, oh, what happened? Man, I had this guy with a blue scarf hit. Hey, that's you. You're the one who put me in this hospital. Moreover, the Hebrews that were with the Philistines before that time, the Hebrews are going over the Philistines, which went up then with the camp from the country round about. Even they also turned to be with the Israelites, that were with Saul and John. And so the ones that have gone to the enemy, now they come back into their family, the Jews. We don't want to hang around with a bunch of losers. So they join Jonathan and Saul. Cowards. Likewise, all the men of Israel which had hid themselves in Mount Ephraim, when they heard that the Philistines fled, Again, we read this in, in uh, 13, 17. They also followed hard after them in the battle. Now, this happens with David. The entire nation of Israel in the battlefield are hiding from Goliath. That young man walks up to Goliath and puts a rock in his skull and he falls down flat. And then all Israel picks up and starts challenging the Philistines. This happens over and over and over with Saul. They also followed hard after them in the battle. Now we're winning. Now we'll join. So the Lord saved Israel that day using Jonathan and his armor bearer and his faith. And the battle passed over unto Beth Haven. Now we're going to stop right there because the, next, the rest of this chapter is another whole story that I don't want to lose the interest of Jonathan. So we'll stop at the war, and we're going to pick up again with Jonathan. And I think it's just remarkable to stop there. And that's one of the things I taught was taught in seminary school is stop when it's good and continue later. <laughs>